Hello, in this video I will provide an introduction to the fundamentals of industrial robot programming. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to know different programming methods of industrial robots as well as different programming levels that are conceptually established. In addition to this, I will mention main programming languages of industrial robots, so you can get familiar with main manufacturer names on their programming languages. Finally, I will describe a set of operations that typically must be done in picking place operations or mechanization trajectories. Here, I show some robot programming methods. Offline programming is carried out by a computer software in which all robot movements to be performed uh, on specific tasks are previously computed. Once the program is verified using simulation tools, it is transferred to the robot controller to run it. On the other hand, in inline programming, an engineer manually moves the robot using the robot controller path and records the positions of interest and configures the corresponding motion instructions to achieve the required task. So, at the end of all this process, the robot will have a code that will be able to reproduce as many times as required, or can be reproduced as many times as required. Collaborative robots provide a third way of programming based on teaching mode. In this case, they use uh, uh, sensors so you can drag the robot arm to the desired position and orientation. Uh, so you can uh, freely move the robot and then use uh, the desired position to later remember them uh, to reproduce it. Conceptually, we will distinguish, distinguish between three different primary levels. On the one side, robot programming level is the set of instructions that the robot is able to execute and you can determine all possible aspects related with the robot motion, speeds, the tool to be used, etc. In the image shown, the robot is performing a spot welding operation with some pre-programmed instructions. On the other hand, the object programming level is conceptually understood as a set of motion primitives that allow the robot to work with specific objects. Such primitives can be adapted to different speeds, positions, etc., but the inner set of instructions to execute basically remain the same. Here, I just simply show an image of a robot picking objects of different sizes that represents the kind of operations that can be performed or implemented uh, with these motion primitives. Last, the task programming level is conceptually representing the set of motions that make a robot perform a specific task, usually considering more complex aspects such as reaching a goal free of collision. In the last image, we can see a robot that is trying to pick an object, so the task must be computed in order to avoid a collision with another object. Each robot manufacturer has its own programming language. This means that there is no standardization in this regard, although they all have a common or a set of common elements such as instructions for coordinated and uncoordinated movement of robot joints, definition of robot configurations, maximum speeds and accelerations, admissible accuracy, etc. Here I show the names of main robot manufacturers and their corresponding language names. ABB uses Rapid, KUKA uses KRL, Komao uses PDL2, Kaskawa uses Inform, Kawasaki uses AS, Fanuc uses Karel, Stobli uses VAL3, and Universal Robots uses your script. As you can see, this makes impossible to explain all of them. Anyway, that would not make too much sense, because you might never use a specific robot brand. So for this reason, we will focus in Rapid in the next videos, which is one of the most widely used languages. And once you know the basics for programming industrial robots, then you will see that it poses no challenge to program different robots. I would also like to mention the existence of Robot Industrial, uh, here I label it as a language, 
um, like a general purpose language, but the fact or the truth is that it's a whole consortium of industrial partners that offers a set of services for uh, developers of advanced industrial applications based on robotic systems. Specifically, they offer a common interface for the vast majority of industrial robots, which sim could simplify the development. It has a repository with open source licenses without commercial use restrictions. In addition, it has uh, tools for programming the robot at the task level, offering optimal collision-free routes, for example, to adapt the trajectory uh, of the tool uh, and the environment. Well, in general, all robot programming languages will include a set of instructions that will allow you to define robot configurations, set different coordinate frames, as well as the type of tool. They have movement instructions to control robot joints with coordinated and non-coordinated movements, let's say to perform a linear and circular movement, and you can set the maximum admissible speeds, accelerations and the accuracy. You can also read digital inputs or activate a digital output to that are connected to the robot controller. And of course, you can uh, control the flow of your program using conventional loop instructions, conditional jumps, weights, routine calls, etc. You can also store information in variables, manage files, and also perform some simple arithmetic operations. In addition to this, many languages have specific commands designed for or by each manufacturer that allow you to perform more specific tasks or adjust internal control parameters. Robots can adopt multiple configurations to achieve a given position and orientation. Specifically, robots with six degrees of freedom could reach up to eight possible configurations for the same position and orientation, as shown. The configurations in the first row are elbow up configurations, while the configurations in the bottom row are elbow down configurations. Specifically, joints 1, 4 and 6 of the robot can adopt two possible configurations each, resulting in total of eight possible com uh, combinations for the three joints. The importance of knowing these configurations lies in the fact that some of them may collide with the objects in the environment, while others may not. In addition to this, some of them are closer to the joint limits, which might imply that we have little margin for maneuvering and they are generally avoided unless necessary. By specifying waypoints of a trajectory, we can indicate if the points are stop points or non-stop points. The resulting trajectory will be different depending on how we configure these waypoints. If you specify a stop point, the robot must reach those positions by preserving the correct position and the velocity will be zero at the end of the point or when reaching the point. While if you define a non-stopping point, the actual robot trajectory will be approximated and the velocity will be kept constant. This is particularly relevant if the tool changes the orientation, for instance, as shown. For non-stopping points, many languages define an admissible accuracy zone where the actual robot trajectory must lie. Therefore, we cannot expect to pass through the program point in a non-stopping point, but to an approximate uh, or nearby position of this point. Here, I show a sequence of operations that we will typically perform in pick-and-place operations, for instance. Normally, we will have to go to a position at a certain height from the object. This movement can be carried out with a coordinated or uncoordinated movement, and it will be generally carried out at a fast speed. Once the point is reached, we will make a, an approach path to the object grip the object and then perform an evacuation maneuver to the original position. This is normally done at the medium speed uh, for, the uh, for the approximation or approach trajectory and at the slow uh, velocity when we're doing the evacuation because we're gripping the object. Then we will move to the uh, or we will move the object to another uh, position using in this case usually 
a coordinated uh, motion at a slow speed and then perform another again approach evacuation maneuver to release the object. Once um, the place uh, operation has been completed, you can then move to different position at a higher speed. The mechanization trajectories that also have uh, approach and uh, evacuation maneuvers, as in the previous example, usually at medium or slow speed. The main difference is that during the mechanization trajectory, we will now make linear or usually we will make linear or circular uh, coordinated movements at low speeds that will depend on the tool used based on the tool's manufacturer recommendation. The tool will start rotating just before we reach the first uh, approximation uh, point and then we will stop at uh, when we uh, execute the last evacuation maneuver. Points of the trajectory can be stop points or non stop points depending what we want. Well, in this presentation I have made a first general introduction about robot industrial programming. In the next video I will introduce about ABB language, rapid language programming. Thank you very much.